Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. My name is Aaron Lefford Evans. I am the caretaker and trainer for the dogs that are owned by Halal Pakistani Mastiffs. The owner of the dogs is Brenda Evans. This breed's history dates back to the 1500s. Okay. Uh, they were used primarily for guarding herds of cattle and, and livestock. They were used to guard homes. These dogs were also spoke of, which you can't prove because they, they kept no definitive record over there of this breed. They were used with uh, the Persian King Xerxes. They speak of a large Mastiff type dog that could have been the Iranian Persian Mastiff or could have been the, what at the time, the Alangu. And, and I may have mispronunciated the word, but it's spelled A-L-A-N-G-U. The Alangu Mastiff is where they state that these dogs derive from. Later on in history, they started using them to fight, which is something that I do not advocate. One, not one shape, form, or fashion. This is a very russic breed of dog. Commonly, this breed is referred to as the Bully Kuta. I do not refer to them as that, and I do not call them that because literally the words Bully Kuta in Farsi and Urdu language mean large wrinkled dog. They are more than just a large wrinkled dog. Uh, they are a Mastiff type of dog that derive from Pakistan as well as India. The Punjab region, which is in both state, both countries, excuse me, Punjab in Pakistan, Punjab in India. Uh, it is a good dog to be utilized for guard work <laughs> typically these dogs male version should be 32 inches or taller at the withers uh, they may get as tall as 35 inches I have not seen any yet 35 inches my dogs personally uh, they are about 34 inches at the withers the female should be 30 inches to 32 inches at the withers my main purpose for breeding this breed is to expose the Western Hemisphere to a form of Mastiff that, first of all, is bred healthy and to show that this dog can have more uses than just fighting because that's primarily what they do with it over there in India and Pakistan. The kennel name is Halal Pakistani Mastiffs, okay? The meaning of Halal is an Arabic word that means lawful, okay? So therefore, these dogs are being used in the lawful manner. And lawful is primarily in regard to the Islamic culture of lawful, all right? It is not lawful to use the dogs to fight. It is not lawful to uh, use the dogs to do anything other than hunt, because remember, they use dogs as hunting tools in the, in, 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 in the past. The, uh, it is lawful to have them to use them as protection of livestock and property. Okay, so that's where the word halal of halal Pakistani masters derives from. It is Islamically lawful the way that I'm using these dogs. I do not use them to hunt any form of animals. Now you come on my wife and I's property, they're going to hunt you. You come on there uninvited, <laughs> they're going to hunt you. Okay. I've been dealing with Mastiff breeds of dogs since 1998. I've done Neapolitan Mastiffs, I've bred Neapolitan Mastiffs, and I've bred South African Mastiffs actually imported the second black borable from uh, Lucas Van Vern and Spitzer Kennels over there in South Africa. So I, I have 
decent amount of knowledge of the Mastiff breeds. This Mastiff breed has definitely shown me that it is a working caliber dog. Is it good for the tight urban areas? No, I wouldn't recommend it. They are protective and along being protective, they have to be aggressive. So they are aggressive towards strange people, animals, everyone but their owner. I like large dog breeds because <clears throat> the larger an animal, the equivalent of a bobcat versus a tiger, a monkey versus a silverback with dogs, the larger the animal, the more man-stopping capabilities that they have. When you're dealing with dogs that are primarily used in a russic, rural environment, you want something that can not only stop a man from coming into your property or home uninvited, you want an animal that can stop a coyote. You want an animal that can stop a bobcat. You want an animal that can stop a bear. Once they establish the dominance, they can be used as dogs to guard herds, like lamb, cow, sheep, and to stop any predator that, that's bigger than them, you have to have a big dog. It is what it is. Blue healers are some of the best herding dogs, but coyotes can kill a blue healer like that. Coyotes can kill, a bobcat can definitely kill an Australian Shepherd with no problem. You know, all the breeders here in America, in the Western Hemisphere, but I don't know anybody else outside of America other than in India and Pakistan that actually owns these dogs. All of us are starting from the bottom floor. I mean, you know, we're, we're starting from little to no validated proof of existence, first of all. In regard to the, uh, the, the uh, I guess you could say, the lineage, which is very important, the pedigree. Nobody has a pedigree on these dogs. The basic size for these dogs, the type, is all we really have to go by. Nobody could bring any form of validated proof that this is where the breed comes from because nobody kept any records. So therefore, I don't put a lot of merit into what people over there in Pakistan and India say because they may or may not be more intelligent than I am, but they weren't considerate enough for the breed to keep records. How can you breed a dog and you don't keep any form of records? You have records for the pit bull dating back 1700. You have records for the Borable, the South African master dating back to the SABT and the Haborable, Historic Aborable Association, dating back to the 1800s. So we're really starting, anyone who claims that they have, including myself, anyone who claims that they have the authentic or pure version of this breed, ask them to bring, including myself, ask them to bring some form of proof physically that you can see other than campfire stories and myths and tales. They can't bring a pedigree. They can't even bring a picture. When you see someone stating any history of the dogs coming from India and Pakistan and you can get good specimens of this type of dog from both countries, India and Pakistan, they'll tell you who the father is. That's it. How can you reproduce a dog and you can only state who the dog's father is, not the dog's mother? Maybe that's some cultural background and that's their culture and I'm not saying anything negative about their culture, but in the Western hemisphere, in the European countries, as well as in America, 
we state the mother and the father because they're 50%. The mother is and the father 50% of the breeding. So it's a mastiff type of dog, 34 inches. It's a mastiff type of dog, but <clears throat> it's, it, it's not, uh, it's not considered a breed, once again, because there's no standard. There's definitely no pedigree, no tracking of the mother and father, the siblings, the litter mates. Uh, like I said, you know, respectfully, the, the people in India and Pakistan have done a, a severe discredit to this type of dog in regard to how they have been reproduced. They have, re they have been reproduced in the exact opposite fashion of every dog that is recognized as a breed in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, they're a very dominant breed of dog. So provided the owner is not a dominant uh, uh, person, then they shouldn't own this breed. My wife sells the Pakistani Masters primarily to people who have homes with at least a quarter acre of land. And because my wife and I have only had one breeding. She kept back three of the dogs for her breeding program and the other ones have gone to clients that have more than a quarter acre of land. They're not good pets because they're going to be very territorial and they're going to display aggression towards other animals and people. So once again, they, I reiterate, they're not a good match for the urban environment. To be honest with you, I have seen my dogs lunge at people, but I can't honestly say that my dogs have attacked people. They have been used in personal protection bite work against people in the bite suits, yes. I can tell when a dog is being aggressive and you'll see, God willing, you won't see, but you'll see uh, examples of aggression when we go outside with them. You won't see that they're aggressive because I'm not going to let you get near them. <laughs> I don't want you to sue me, but, but I have very high confidence that my dogs will bite any human. And that's, that's why I wouldn't sell them to somebody in an urban area. The area that my wife and I live in, it's a rural area. And this is why we own those dogs. I can honestly say I, I, I've taken my dog into urban areas because I have to take him to the veterinarian and once again video proof of it, but they're muzzled. I don't advocate puppy milling and my wife and I, because we are an Islamic household, we don't sell dogs for profit. We sell our puppies to gain back what we have put into their $10,000 dog house, 40 feet, 45 feet long. 12 feet wide. We, we take the money back to put into the cow organs that we pay that we pay for to feed these dogs. We take the money to put back in the money that we use to bring the dogs over here from India. But it's evident we have one litter on the ground and the litter's 15 months old. My female has definitely gone through heat three times again and I refuse to breed her because first of all I want this first specimen of the breed for, uh, from, from our kennel to be old enough to where I can say, you know what, we're, we're repeating the same thing. In the Halal Pakistani Master breeding contract, you must have the dog's hips tested after the age of 18 months. You cannot use these dogs in any form of illegal fighting sports. You can use them for personal protection shits and work. If the dogs that Halal Pakistani Masters has, their breeding contract restricts you to only breeding dogs that they approve of you to breed with. That's it. You can't breed it with uh, uh, any form of dog to bring a bigger size or uh, 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 a more aggressive temperament. 
the reason that the Halal Pakistani Massive contract is so restrictive is so that the, the dogs are owned in a responsible manner, are used in a responsible manner. They're not, of course, we, I reiterated about them fighting, but I don't want them to be uh, just turned off of the leash in, in, in a backyard, quarter acre or bigger, with a four foot fence and the dog go over the fence and hurt a child, hurt a woman, hurt a man. These dogs, because of their, first of all, their, their lack of exposure to the Western Hemisphere, second of all, the fact that there's probably a less than I definitely know it's less than a hundred of this specimen of dog in this country, America. <clears throat> I want them to be displayed and presented in the most lawful, ethical, responsible manner. And this is why with the Halal Pakistani Master breeding contract, you're not just going to set them out off of a leash. You're not going to take them to a dog park. You're gonna use them for what they have been used for for years and the, the halal uh, correct usage. They're gonna guard and they're gonna love and they're gonna protect the family, but they're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to be represented because they're so new to this country. They're gonna be represented in every positive aspect that the breed can uh, when it actually becomes a breed. Thanks to God and God alone, I have an opportunity to establish a breed standard for the Pakistani Mastiff, for the Indian Mastiff, okay? The, the mission statement of this kennel, Halal Pakistani Masters, is to establish that first of all, there is a, a, a pedigree line. Second of all, there is a breed standard for confirmation, angulation, appraisal. To make this breed get the same accreditation as every European and American breed, such as the German Shepherd, such as the South African Mastiff, such as the Great Dane, such as the Bull Mastiff. I want this dog to be viewed equally as every other dog coming out of Europe and America. Will it happen in the next couple years? I doubt it. But God willing, with my diligent and hard work, my wife's diligent and hard work, we will bring this dog up to the same standard as the Cane Corso, as the Bull Mastiff, as the Fila, as the Argentina Dogo, as the Turkish Kangal, all of these dogs that at one time were not accepted by the European kennel clubs and registries and they were not recognized as breeds of dogs. <laughs>